Right, so good morning, uh, good afternoon, and hello. Welcome to today's uh, Light Bites episode. Um, today we're going to be looking at the exciting topic of home cinemas and games rooms. Um, so uh, there's quite a few funky, uh, interesting things you can do in these spaces to make a statement um, using the lighting to, to just show off a little bit. Um, you know, you don't have a, a cinema room at home unless you want to show off. Um, so we can really use the lighting to, uh, to help enhance these spaces. The cinema rooms uh, can be uh, a little bit challenging for us um, in terms of you know, specifying and locating the lighting. One of the reasons for that is um, soundproofing. Um, if you are doing a proper cinema, then you do need to be quite careful about the surfaces which you're using within the room. Um, a lot of our clients have um, a company who actually designs that whole space for them. Uh, so they'll come in, they'll specify the projector, the audio equipment, <clears throat> what materials should be used for the walls. Um, so it tends to be that there usually there's some soundproofing or some sound absorbing materials um, on the serious cinemas, um, which are there to prevent any sort of noise uh, reverberation. Uh, in this image here, which I've used uh, for the soundproofing, um, you can see that we actually have these little cones. And this is something that we do see on several projects. Um, these different materials, uh, different foams that are used. Um, and actually, they can be quite an interesting feature to light themselves. You know, you could skim over that and you could highlight the, the texture of it. Um, you can give it definition using the lighting. So uh, sometimes, in some cases, it can be um, an obstruction. Uh, in other cases, it can be an opportunity uh, to integrate lighting. Um, you've also got the audio system itself. <clears throat> Tends to be that there's a lot of speakers in there. They're all there to do their different jobs. Um, but it can mean that we need to be careful about where we position the light. Um, a lot of cinemas will have a ceiling recess uh, speaker system, which can obstruct you uh, from positioning the lights exactly where you want them to be. Um, other times they have the, light, uh, the audio system integrated into the walls which again can be difficult to work around. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that we need uh, this information in advance um, so that we can, uh, we can be mindful uh, and, and try to design around that uh, because the, the audio and the, and the visual equipment is, is very, very important uh, to the success of the cinema. Uh, you then have uh, ceiling uh, recessed projectors, uh, which sometimes pop down um, in order to then project onto the screen. Um, so obviously we can't be positioning lights uh, in the same location as those, those projectors. Um, also, you can't have any hanging lights in front of it. Um, if you've got any sort of coffer detail uh, where the ceiling is stepped, um, then you need to be careful that that's you know, not going to cause an obstruction um, to the, uh, the actual screen. Uh, the drop-down screens, uh, sometimes uh, the client will have a fixed screen. Um, and other times it will be a drop-down uh, screen that's concealed within the ceiling. The fixed screen on the wall um, can be a, a little bit of a challenge for us because uh, when the cinema is not in use or nothing's being projected onto that screen, um, it's just a big sort of rectangular square of white. Um, so potentially not uh, particularly interesting to look at. Um, the drop-down screen, screen allows you to maybe have a TV behind <clears throat> or even a piece of artwork which could be lit uh, and then when the screen comes down, um, the lighting to the artwork goes off. You also have uh, potentially in some circumstances tiered seating um, so that if you have a double row that the people at the back um, can see the screen properly. Um, so for us, uh, that's a good opportunity to uh, incorporate some lighting uh, and also quite important from a safety point of view, cinema rooms are quite dark. Um, and uh, a little lighting to any change of uh, floor level uh, would, be, would be quite a sensible idea, really. You then have the issue that uh, a lot of the finishes used will be dark ones uh, to reduce the amount of reflection you're getting uh, from light from the screen, um, which means that anything we're lighting tends to be reduced in its impact. Um, not all cinemas are like that, um, but it's something to consider in, in certain circumstances. As the main points, I think, Bex, aren't they? The I think so, patterns. yeah. I think uh, <laughs> often the dark finishes, especially if you're sort of working with velvets mm. with really deep, rich colours, they can really manipulate the lighting. Uh, so it's always good to test that colour temperature as well, because mm. if you have a green velvet, it's always going to look slightly different 
uh, can with, really with suck it in like a black hole. It can, it can, yeah. So the detail needs to be perhaps a little bit more sort of exposed so that you're considering that the light isn't going to be, you know, 100% concealed. Um, so it's, it's always just that extra thought, which uh, unfortunately we sometimes don't get to the end. <laughs> so it, uh, it can sort of work against us. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder to everyone that um, Dex is, is monitoring our chat and the Q&A. Um, so if you do have any questions, um, yes, post them far away and I will be uh, asking Luke to answer those. So we'll, leave, we'll either do that as we go through, if it's appropriate, or we'll leave them to the end. Um, we do tend to get quite a few questions. So if you do have to rush off after the webinar today, um, don't worry. Um, you, can, you can always review the recording if you needed to. Um, but we will come around to your, your questions at some point. Okay, so yes, the cinema room, um, certainly a place where you can show off. Um, now, when you're actually watching a movie, um, the amount that you, uh, of light that you actually need is, is quite minimal. In fact, you, you almost don't want light um, so that you're really immersed into the, the movie or whatever you're doing uh, with the screen uh, and that your, your attention is fully focused on that. But, you know, if, if I had a cinema room in my house, I'd want to take people in there and really show off and uh, you can do some fun stuff with the lighting. And the cinema room is not only a place where you're there to watch a, a movie and you want that immersive ex experience. You could go in there and watch your, you know, your favorite sitcom or you know, EastEnders or Coronation Street, whatever it is, just unwinding at the end of the day. Um, people use these spaces in different ways. And, and uh, many people, this is you know, a, another, just another sitting room for them, uh, which has the ability to you know, up, its, up its game for um, home movie watching. So in this particular room here, you can see how we are really using accent lighting um, to, to bring the space to life. You've got the very, very dramatic up-down lighting effect on the back wall, which is creating these, these columns of, of light, which is elongating the space. And then on the curved walls, we've got floor recessed up light, as this is a Luca fitting, um, which is great for giving that little dramatic shaft of light. And then on the ceiling, you've got this uh, round coffer detail and we're using an LED tape in there. And that's reflecting light off the ceiling and bouncing it back down into the space. So one good thing um, in, a, in a cinema room is the ambient lighting. Um, and that would be perfect for a, a coffer detail like that to give you just a nice even illumination of light. Here, this is a, a very different approach, very much your sort of conventional uh, cinema setup <clears throat> with the screen and the tiered, um, tiered seating. In the ceiling here, we have um, a fiber optic uh, starry sky system. So this is where you have a remote light box um, in an accessible location. And then you'll have small fibers which travel through the ceiling void and then um, they penetrate the ceiling. Um, so it's just a very, very small fiber point. When it's off, you don't see anything at all. Um, that produces this little bit of soft illumination it, it gives you um, an interesting feature on the ceiling a bit of a sparkle um, but you do also have to be mindful that this space needs to be cleaned um, so you wouldn't want to just put in the fiber optic lighting it's good to have a backup um, in this case we've got some down lights there as well so you can really boost the light level with some down light and then you know when you switch to movie uh, scene you can introduce the fiber optics for that more sort of atmospheric setup I always think with the, uh, the, the location of the fiber optic uh, projector is, is, is a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? Because of the noise that they can produce. It's certainly something that needs to be considered because obviously the environment for a cinema room needs to be entirely silent. Um, so any noise that can be created from those projectors, because they, if they're in an in a enclosed space, it really sort of amplifies it and it echoes. So it's definitely something to consider positioning it slightly away from the uh, the cinema room otherwise you get the fan and everything else making a lot of noise that uh, yeah sometimes they're in the ceiling sometimes they're uh, integrated into a coffee table even at low yeah. level um and you, yeah it can be quite creative have you ever done a, um, a cinema with an actual sort of projector room vex yes Yes, yeah. an entirely separate projector room. And it was all accessed from both sides as well because I know how much she was very fond of it. Um, so, yes, but the, project, the projector for the, uh, for the fiber optics was positioned as far back as possible um, mm. so that we didn't get that noise. Um, and it was definitely something that uh, is, is certainly 
got to be considered earlier on because obviously the conduits that need to be run for those have to cross varying bits and pieces like the uh the actual camera projector itself i suppose it's mm. it's um always a little bit trickier 